Hello, BookTube Nation. I'm Sam here again with A Bear and a Bee Books. And today I'm so excited. I'm filming my TBR clear out. Um, TBR. <laughs> There's a readathon for the entire month of April hosted by Katie over at Books and Things. Um, I'm sure, of course, you follow her. She's lovely. I'll leave her channel linked down below. So um, definitely go check it out, though, if you haven't heard about the readathon. It's fun. Basically, it's kind of um, a readathon to get you to pick up books that you might not have been more likely to pick up or books that have been on your TBR for a really long time. So I was looking for kind of a more easier um, readathon to participate in this month. And um, I, confession, have a huge, huge physical TBR. I don't even know how big it is. I think it's in the three digits, though it might be in the fours. I have a lot of books at home. And I mean, I've read a lot. I think just on Goodreads, I think I'm nearing the 500 mark, but I have tons. I, um, yeah. So <laughs> let's talk about what I'm going to be thinking about reading this month. I'm kind of doing a mishmash of things. Um, and then I have two other new ones. I really would like to try and prioritize this month. So, um, I'll mention those here as well. I have one of the oldest books on my TBR. This is Locked in Time by Lois Duncan. This, believe it or not, if you're in the States, you probably know what I'm talking about. They used to have these um, book fairs. I think they still do those at school. And I'm pretty sure I bought this at a middle grade book fair. Yep, I've had it that long. <laughs> then the sticker will also give me away. I got this at Borders on a sale. Um, Borders was my favorite bookstore and unfortunately has been no more for quite some time. But um, every once in a while I'll come across one of these and I'm like, oh, I miss Borders. Anyway, this is A Widow for One Year and this is by John Irving. Nowadays, this is something I probably would not gravitate towards, but as I own it in my physical collection, I would one day like to give it a try. Both of these are so old that I don't really remember a whole heck of a lot about them, except that this one is doing with time travel. And this one I think has to do with like, um, more of like a chiclet kind of feel relationship stuff. Next, I have something, I think I picked this up either last year or the year before. Um, this is called The Lost Girls by Heather Young. I wanted to put some things on the list that I was also currently in the mood for. Um, obviously, with events in the world and things going on, I'm looking for something a little bit less involved than I have been reading of lately. And I think this is like a historical uh, mystery. I don't know a whole lot about this. I think it has to do with um, someone going missing and then the family. I think they're looking into it. I want to say it's set in the 30s. Yeah, 1935. So um, it has some things that I really enjoy as far as like with historical fiction and um, some family dramas. So I'm curious to see what this is. I haven't heard anybody talk about this on booktube. So I'm interested. I wanted to put a full trilogy on here and I went back and forth which one I was going to pick because I have quite a few on my shelves but I was like okay with the way of the world right now I want something light and fluffy and fun and feel like I'm traveling in my own safe way. <laughs> um, so I decided to put on the list the Anna uh, Lola and Isla um, trilogy. This is by Stephanie Perkins. I normally don't read a lot of YA contemporary, but like I did in February because of Valentine's Day, every once in a while I'll get in the mood for it and then I just devour it. So I like to have some on my shelves in case I get in the mood. And I've heard really good things about this. Plus they're um, like in different places from where I reside. So that'll be kind of nice to feel like I'm kind of like getting out. Next, I have one I'm going to try and do a buddy raid with my mom. She's trying to get one from the library, fingers crossed. Um, we're gonna try and do this the second half of the month. This is The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. All of her books intrigue me. I don't know why I haven't read them yet. I've had this first one on my shelf for a while now. Um, I think I got this online and it was when one of the 
stores. I don't remember. I think it might have been Book Depository that used to do it. But there used to be like a special day of the year where they would have like certain books and like during the hour certain books would be on sale. And I remember one year I had a lot of fun doing that and I believe I picked this one up then but I could be wrong. But anyway that's kind of just the memory I have associated with it. But yeah um, this has so many like little boxes like ticks for me. Um, it's set in like an old house, there's gothic, it's um, historical fiction, it has a female protagonist. I don't know how I haven't read this yet, but I haven't. So here it is, and I hope I get to this one. This is The Ghost of the Mary Celeste by Valerie Martin. This one, I was really excited when I bought it, and then I read, I try not to always do this, but I read some of the reviews on Goodreads, and I was like, hmm. So some of the reviews weren't so favorable. So I've been putting it off probably because of that. Um, but I am still interested in the story. Um, if you know me, anything nautical appeals to me. Um, this I believe is mostly set on a ship and it has to do with a ghost ship, which is even more interesting and it's historical fiction. One of my favorite books that I ever read what had really low reviews on Goodreads. That book had awful reviews and I really enjoyed it. My sense of humor is definitely different from a lot of people. I have kind of like two differences of my personality. Like I either want to be all ah or very like somber. So I don't know. Some weird things fit for me sometimes. They just do. Oh I have to show you. So can you see? Like I'm wearing my Maleficent shirt today, which I love. It's super comfortable and I got it at um, Box Lunch if you have those near you. I really like them. Um, they do shipping and delivery and stuff. So right now you can probably still get their stuff. But <laughs> my daughter is so funny because she loves this shirt and she's not afraid of it at all. And every time we wear it, she's like, ah, ah, and she makes a little like dragon noise because she loves um, like dinosaurs and stuff. So <laughs> it's so funny. Anyway, I just. I wanted to share that with you because it made me laugh. I know, I know, I should have read it and I've had it. It's Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn and my poor husband, God bless him, he wanted to watch the movie and I was like, no, don't watch it, wait for me to read the book. And now he's heard some spoilers and I've heard some little itty bitty spoilers, but I think that I would still get enjoyment out of it. I don't usually read thrillers though, so I think that's why this sat on my shelf so long. It is a bigger book almost 500 pages, but I'm gonna try. All right, next is one that's been on my shelves for way too long, years and years. This is Wrapped by Jennifer Bradbury. And this is just a YA historical, I think it's time travel -y type story. Yeah, 1815 takes place. And there's mummies and mysteries, and it just looked like fun. I picked it up years ago. Another light and fluffy, because I wanted to make sure I had plenty of those um, on this list, and that is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. I know a lot of people on BookTube love this. Um, I'm probably a little bit older than the group of YouTubers that love this book, but I like to read fluff every once in a while. It makes me happy sometimes. So um, I have liked some Jenny Han I've read I've enjoyed and I've also enjoyed some Casey West and Sarah Dessen. I wanted to pick up something fairy tale since I run the fairy tale -a -thon. I'll link below um, my folder with all my fairy tale -a -thon videos and if you're interested I run a fairy tale inspired uh, readathon twice a year. So I wanted to put at least one on this list. I tried to read a couple during the year to like so I can give recommendations and things and um this is one I've been hesitant to read so it does fit the readathon because it's listed as horror. I used to be when I was younger like I'm not really into horror so I can handle some gore and some grit. Um, sometimes I even tend to like darkness in books but I don't know I'm a little not sure about this so I put it on the list. Lullaby by Chuck Palahniuk and um yeah, I should have read this a long time ago, but I didn't. Another booktube darling that I've had for a while is The First 15 Lives of Harriet August by Claire North. Yeah, I wanted to read it. I was super excited about it. Had to buy it, had to have it, and here it sits. Next is another older YA book I've had for a while. This is Lucid. I think this has to do um, with dreams and 
can dreams become a reality? Like not in the metaphorical sense, like literally. And sometimes I lucid dream, so I thought that I would find this interesting. Another contemporary um, book is Rules of Summer by Joanna Philbin. And yeah, just wanted to make sure I had lots of that stuff in this list. So here's another one. Another um, historical fiction, which I've thought about picking up a million times and I never did because again, I read some unfavorable reviews, but her other book that I have gets really great reviews. And this one's short, so I thought it would be a good way to try her writing style. Um, this is The House I Loved by Tatiana de Rosne. And her other book, Sarah's Key, I have. I haven't read that one yet either, but it gets really good reviews. And this, I think, takes place in France, and I have some French heritage. Um, so I just thought it would be a good one to try. Another one I've actually heard good things about, but I've had for a while and just haven't thought about picking up lately is Still Alice by Lisa Genova. And um, I think the reason I've been putting this one off is the medical part in this one kind of freaks me out a little bit just because of some personal and family history but I have heard really good things about it. Reality Boy by ASK. I literally have no idea what this is. I think I got this. Um, I used to belong to, I think it was called Bookcase Club. And um, I have um, other books by A.S. King. I don't know what this one's about though, but um, I figured this was the readathon for that. Next I have Keep Sweet by Michelle Dominguez Green. This is another Y that sat on my shelves for a long time. I think this one is a little bit more dark and gritty. I think it has to do with some abuse and so that's one reason it has sat on my shelves for a while. Next is another one that because of the reviews kind of scared me a little bit. This is Save Me by Jenny Elliott. This has a lot of things that I would think I would really love. Like it seems kind of gothic. There's mentions of witches and guardian angel. I don't know. I used to really like angel stories. So we'll see how this goes. I don't, I don't know. Here is one. I think um, Kayla at um, Books and Lala reviewed this a long time ago. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll get to that. And yeah. So this is Holly Bodger 5 to 1. Now I did pick this up to read it once, but um, some of it I think is in verse, which I now enjoy, but at the time I hadn't really read any, so I was a little put off by that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm into it now, so I think now might be a good time to try this one. Another one I've had on my shelves for a while, and I don't know why it sat so long, because I love pirate stuff. Um, this is The Pirate Ruse by Marcia Lynn McClure, and um, yeah, I love pirate anything, so it's been on my shelves for a while. I haven't had a reason to get to it, um, and I'm giving it one. Another one that I've had a long time, I've probably moved this one through like five different houses with me. I don't know, and I still haven't read it. And I've actually heard really good things about this. This is Sea Music by Sarah McDonald. Um, and I think it's like a family drama saga thing. Um, but this one, the worst thing I've heard about it is that the cover is awful and don't listen to the cover. So that gives me hope for what's inside. Now I have my two newer books that I'm really excited to get to and I don't really want to wait too long. Um, the first one I actually read a couple of chapters online and I was so sucked and I had to order it right away. Um, and that is Sharks in the Time of Saviors, a novel by Kauai Strong Washburn. So a little bit about me. I used to really love to travel. I went to Hawaii um, a few years back and absolutely fell in love with the island of Kauai. Um, I, I went on hikes, I went to waterfalls, I saw rainbows, I went to the ocean. My husband and I scoured that whole island um, and we did the tubing experience. If you ever go, it's a lot of fun, you should try it. Um, where they give you like a little helmet and you go through caves and anyway, it's a lot of fun. I started reading this and it, it references a lot of the Hawaiian folklore that I experienced, uh, well not experienced, that I um, heard about while I was there and I love, you know me, I love anything mythology, fairy tale, or folklore and this was checking lots of boxes. Plus my family, um, used to really be in the shark week. My brother has gone down and actually um, dove with the sharks. So that is like a secondary interest of mine as well. I'm hoping to really enjoy this. And the first couple of chapters that I read, I just, mm, yeah. And finally, you guys, 
it happened. <laughs> this is Race the Sands, a novel by Sarah Beth Durst. I went on Goodreads and I said, hey, I'd like to read that from your giveaway. And I got one. It happens. <laughs> it's real. Um, in fairness, this is the second time I ever won um, one of those. But one of the books I wanted so much that I went out and bought a final copy right away. So now I have my final copy. But anyway, um, yeah, this actually sounds right up my alley. Um, I happen to really like, and maybe I'll do a video about it, um, coming up, but I happen to really like YA books that involve, like, a chase or a race or, uh, like, even, like, the Hunger Games, like, a, a, a game for survival, that whole trope. I'm down for. <laughs> so this is another like race on these like monster creatures and it's through like this desert landscape and that's all I needed to know. Plus I've read another one of her books and I really enjoyed it. It was a book I read by her. It was her one of the retelling of East of the Sun, West of the Moon. I think it's called Ice. And I really enjoyed that. Um, I liked her writing style. I thought she did a really good job with the setting and the description. And um, yeah, I'm excited. This is a lot bigger than the last one of hers I read, but as far as I can tell, it's supposed to be a standalone. So joy for me, because I love fantasy standalones and duologies. Those are like my happy place. Those are way too many books for the speed of reader that I am with the time available that I currently have allotted, considering I have a toddler who I don't like to read when she's awake. So that doesn't, she doesn't sleep a lot for a toddler. So I only really read when she's sleeping. And sometimes I have to do other things like film or clean or cook. So you could, you know how it is, life, right? But yeah, um, I'm trying to be overly ambitious because the world is I want to say something that I shouldn't say. <laughs> um, yeah, I fill in the blankety blanks. Um, yeah, I just, I've been really trying to keep my mind on things that I enjoy, like my family and reading, and stay focused on that as opposed to everything else that's going on. Um, you know, of course, keep yourself educated and in the know, but oh, to dwell, right? Like, I'm really trying hard not to dwell on it. I hope that all of your families are doing well, that you're staying safe, um, and that everyone is finding a way to exist in this new world that we're currently in. I just want to wish everyone well. Um, but yeah, so if you're new, hi! <laughs> if you're returning, hello! Um, I'm Sam. I just want to thank you so much for being here with me today. Farewell for now. Bye!